In this lesson, we're going to solve equations using a couple different theorems. So, the difference between a root and a zero is that a root is a, an equation like this. So, this equation only has one variable, whereas a function will have two variables, an x and a y, or an x and a f of x. So, the first theorem is called the rational root theorem. So the rational root theorem is gives you a list of possible rational roots. So to find the possible rational roots what you do is you take you look at your last um, value in your polynomial so p f, f and you take your initial coefficient 3 and you do the factors of 3, or factors of 5, factors of 5 is gonna, are going to be your numerators, and then factors of 3 are going to be your denominators. So factors of 5 are 1 and 5, and you also have to include the positives and the negatives. Factors of 3 are plus or minus 1 and plus or minus 3. So then what do you do is you, this is going to be your numerator and this is going to be your denominator and you have to use all combinations. So first I'm going to take this numerator and use this as my denominator and this as my denominator. So I'm going to have plus or minus 1 because I did these two and then I'm also going to have plus or minus 1 third because of these two. And then I'm going to use my second number and make sure I divide each of them. So my second number is going to give me plus or minus 5 and plus or minus 5 thirds. So these are the possible rational roots. To find the actual real roots, or actual roots, you're going to go on your calculator and you're going to see where this cubic crosses the x-axis. It could cross once, it could cross twice, or it could cross three times. So you actually have to look on your calculator. And I'm going to do the same thing over here. So this is 20. So 20 is going to have a lot. So factors of 20 are 1, 2, 5, 10, and 20. Factors of 5 are just 1, and 5. And all of these are going to be plus or minus. So I'm going to do first one is going to be plus or minus 1. Second one, plus or minus 1 fifth. Then I do this number, plus or minus 2. And then plus or minus 2 fifths. Realize I forgot 4. So I'm going to do plus or minus 4, plus or minus 4 fifths, plus or minus 5. And I already did, so I did 5 right here. I don't need to do 5 fifths because that's just 1, so that's repetitive. So I'm going to move on to 10. So 10 is plus or minus 10, and then 10 fifths is 2, so I already have that. And I have plus or minus 20 right here. And then 20 fifths is just plus or minus 4. So these are my possible rational roots, a lot of different numbers. So I'm going to graph this cubic and see how many times it crosses. And those are going to be my actual roots. Second theorem is the irrational root theorem. So if a and B are rash be rational numbers, and the square root of B be an irrational number. If A plus root B is a root, then the conjugate is the root. So remember, this is a conjugate. So a polynomial equation with rational coefficients has roots at 2, negative root 5, and root 7. Find two additional roots. So if I use this theorem, the conjugate of 2 minus root 5 is 2 plus root 5. 
and the conjugate of root 7 is negative root 7. So complex conjugates are number pairs a plus bi and a minus bi. So the same holds for imaginary roots too. If you have a plus bi be a root, then a minus bi is a root, so they come in conjugates. So the two additional roots right here are going to be 2 minus 9i and negative 7i. And down here it's going to be negative root 7 and positive 5i. Okay, in the next part, writing a polynomial equation from its roots. So if you're given the roots, you have to think about its conjugates, and then we're going to write this polynomial for it. So if it doesn't, doesn't read whether it's in standard form, so if I know a polynomial has a root at negative 2, then it's going to be x plus 2. If I know it has a root at x at 2 minus i, it's going to be x minus, and I'm going to be careful and put this in parentheses, 2 minus i, because you're subtracting that whole quantity. So if it has a root at 2 minus i, it also has a root at 2 plus i. So I'm going to write that one in. So I still do x minus, but this time in red I do 2 plus i. So let's, let's make that look better without having those parentheses. So it's x plus 2 and then x minus 2 plus i, because I did distribute your property, and it's going to be x minus 2 minus i over here. So it's a third degree polynomial because this is going to be 1, 2, 3, degree 3. So same thing with this one. You have roots at 8, so it's going to be 0 equals x minus 8. x minus 3i, and then the opposite of 3, the conjugate of 3i is going to also be a, a root, so I'm going to do x plus 3i.